one of the reasons that the lamp of God went out there was be, was not uh, it, it was it was because of what they were doing, but more because the priest didn't have the backbone to say anything. He was afraid to say what was wrong. Are you with me? And because of that, the lamp began to go out in the temple. And when the lamp goes out, let me tell you something. When, 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 the, Lord, when the Lord begins to move out from the temple, all you have is a religious form. For years, Saul and the people worshipped and went through everything like, like usual, but God wasn't there. For years, in the reign of Saul, Saul was not a worshiper. King Saul didn't, didn't like to get there with God. And because of that, he missed God. And it wasn't until David came in that David hungered for the presence of God to be there again. I don't know about you, but I hunger for the presence of God to burn in the church again. You are the church. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the temple of the Holy Ghost must be burning with the presence of God. It is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. God's very presence dwelling within the believer. The burning fire of God that will change things. The Word of God, listen to me, cannot be something that you just hear, but it's got to be something that you allow to be manifested in your life. It's, it's got to become real. Are you with me tonight? It, it must become real. There's something about a, a lamp that's burning. You, you, can, you, can, you can tell when, a, when an individual is on fire for God, and you can tell when an individual has cooled down. You, you don't have to go, you know, find books in the library to find out who, what, what the symptoms are. You can see them. They're manifested. It, it's shown. Are you with me? Amen. So tonight we're, we're going to see this because it's, it's so powerful. Because out of the, a, a lamp that is burning, amen, the manifestation of who God is will come out of that lamp. I said when a lamp is burning, the manifestation of who God is will come out of that lamp. You can't hide God. You can't put God. The Bible says you can't put a light under a bushel and hide it. It, 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 it won't work. He said you set it up on top of a hill for all to see. There, there's something about a light. When you see a light on it's manifested its brightness of what it's supposed to be. The purpose of that light is being manifested. And that's what the Lord sees uh, in, the, in the church today is that the church should be manifesting who God is. If we're burning, if we are lamps that are really on fire for God. Let's read this because this is, this is what, one of the things that comes from uh, a person who is, who, is, who is burning for God, who is, who is a lamp. Amen. That's, that's really on fire for the Lord. Amen. It's more than going to church. I know people that go to church and they think that that's all God desires. We're just going to go to church. They never pray. They never get in the Word. They never build a relationship. They never, uh, they just show up thinking, God, I, I'm here, so you got to do everything for me because I showed up. And it'll never happen. I, I was thinking about it today. Sometimes 
we, 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 we look at individuals. Let me tell you something. We have, and, and, and the reason that I, that I see it this way is because I've seen this. Uh, you know, we have seen thousands upon thousands of people come up to an altar to accept Christ as their Savior. And the Lord began to tell me something the other day. He said, you can't change someone through a prayer if they're not willing to repent. Amen. If they're not willing to let me in, I can't come in. I thought about it. I said, Lord, that is heavy. Because we pray for many and, and we call them up on Monday, we call them up and, and we try to go out there and visit them and, and, and encourage them to get back up. But listen, I can't change them. There's no one here that can change them if their hearts aren't open to God. They'll never change. You know why prayer is so important? You know why prayer is so, so very important? Because the more you pray for a person, the worse they get. No, don't believe me. The more you pray for a person, the weaker the power, power of darkness are in their life. Yes. Hear me. Yes. yes. Hear me. And, and the Spirit of God is able to begin to deal with the person. He's able to begin to speak to them and, and deal with them so that they will come to that place where they finally surrender. Are you, are you with me? Amen. So, so if, 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 if you don't pray, there's no, no breaking down the power of darkness. Are, are you with me, church? Amen. But this, what I want to share with you tonight is, is powerful because this uh, should be manifested out of our lives. Amen. If we are really burning or on fire for God. Amen. We should be manifesting who God is. And I want you to say this with me. God. God. Say it like you mean it. God, God. is Love. God is love. The Bible says, the Bible says that the fruits of the Spirit, the very first fruit of the Spirit is love. The very first thing that's going to come out of a vessel that's burning and that's on fire for God is love. But let me tell you something. Love... Uh, There's one thing to, to love and to be foolish. I've, I've had people in, in our time, uh, amen, that'll come by. And, uh, you know, there's people all the time that come by here. And there, there's, some, there's churches sometimes that, that don't want to deal with them. They'll send them over here. I'm serious. And they'll want us to give them money. And, and to tell you the truth, I wish I could give the whole world money. I wish I, could, I wish I could just help everybody, you know. But the, the reality of it is, is that not everybody is trying to look for real help. A lot of people are trying to take advantage of God. And we take love for weakness. There's a lot of people that think, okay, now you're a Christian. So because you're a Christian, you've got to be like this. You've got to do this. I, I, told, I told the church one day, I says, well, I wish I could find somebody that could draw me a picture of Jesus whipping those people out of the temple. You know, what, you know what would happen? If, you, if that happened, if Jesus would walk in here today and start, you would backslide. 
Because you don't know, you don't know that what he did, he did in love. How many know that in love, there's a, a, a correction and there's part of embracing and there's love has many faces. Come on, are you with me today? There are times you have to correct and there are times you have to rebuke. There are times you have to do something, but you do it in love. And then there's times that there are people that are sincere that do really need help and, and you do the best you can. Now, let me say something to you. I have a responsibility and my responsibility is to teach you how to grow in your faith and love for God. How to burn for Him. Hear me. How to burn in your burning and uh, be on fire for God in, in, the, in, in your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Hear me. To, to burn for the Lord where you, listen to me, where you can learn to depend on the source of God. How many are Christians here? How many are saved? Amen. Let me see your hands. Amen. Okay. Those of you that aren't, we'll, we'll give you the opportunity to get saved tonight. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not saying this for your sake. I'm saying this for those that are not saved. Because the ones that are not saved, we got to help. But for the ones that are saved, my responsibility is to help you come into the place where you build that relationship with God in such a way, hear me, in such a way that your faith grows and is dependent upon God. Come on, are you with me? Where, where now you are flowing with God's love and you are now helping those that don't know God. Hello. I said hello. If, if, if you don't grow out of that, you're going to be a mess. Every time you get in a problem or a situation, hear me, every time you get into a problem or a situation and no one jumps in immediately to help you, you're going to get all messed up only because you didn't grow in your faith in God. Only because your source was on someone else other than God. Amen. The church has to rise to another place, another level, so that they can help others that don't know God. Amen. If I'm always the one asking for help, if I'm always the one that can't rise above myself, if I can't rise above my, my situation, if I can't trust God to help me, how can I help someone else? How can I help someone else come out of their dilemma if I can't even come out of my own? If I can't believe God, if I can't trust God, you know, I, I say I love God, but yet I don't trust Him. How can you love God and not trust God? And, and I understand, listen to me, I understand that it, not everybody grows right away. Not everybody grows at the same level. And not I understand all that. But listen to me, if five years from now you're still at the same place, there's something wrong. <laughs> the devil will use those things to turn your lamp on. You'll become critical. You'll become, you know, you, you'll be looking for wrong things. You'll, you, your fire will go out. Are you with me tonight? Amen. God wants us to rise up. 
a little, a little higher where we begin to know who God really is and trust God. Believe God. So that we can help others. Amen. Others that don't know God. We have spent, the enemy has kept us so busy on our own selves for so many years. We're, it's all about us. It's all about us. We're caught up with ourselves so much that, that, that the world is passing us up. The world is out there so lost, so messed up. And people are looking for someone who can rise up with the power of God, with a bur being a burning lamp that, 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 that will touch their life and, and transform them and help them find God for reals. And, and we gotta, we got to look beyond that. we got to get beyond that. I want you to read with me in the book of Luke. Amen. Are you with me tonight? See, I go against the grain. I go against the grain. You know why? I go against, I, I, I guess I've always done that. I'm like the salmon. I, I, go, I swim upstream, brother. The, the water's going the opposite. I won't go up the other direction. See, but I go against the grain. You know why? Because we love, we love to stay at where we're at. We get comfortable in a certain area in our Christian faith, and we want to stay there. We don't want to climb up any higher. And if we don't climb up any higher than that, you won't be able to help others. Listen to me. One thing about the world. I'm going to tell you something about the world. The world can, 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 can detect easily whether you really got the goods or you don't. Are you here? I was, I was years ago I was preaching... I was preaching on forgiveness. Years ago, the Lord prompted my heart to preach on forgiveness. This was back in probably, I think, about 1990, 1988, 1989, somewhere around there. <laughs> Imagine, I was preaching on forgiveness. And I remember a, a sister was sitting there, her and her family. And she looked so nice and so kind. They invited a young brother that had just come to the Lord, invited him home. And when they got home, they invited him over to have lunch with them. And when they got home, he, he was shocked. She threw her, she got her Bible and she threw it. She says, I will not forgive. I will not do what that man says. And man, this guy, it blew his, blew his mind. Because, hear me, you know why? Because he was looking to them for an answer to life. Are you with me tonight? So tonight we're going to see some of the first thing that comes out of a, a, a life that is on fire for God, that's burning for God. Amen. Let's see this. Let's go to verse 25. We're going to, we're going to go through here. We're going to go through different scriptures. Can we do that tonight? Amen. Amen. Verse 25, and it says it like this. It says, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master... What shall I do to inherit eternal life? What shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? Jesus kind of turned it around a little bit and asked him a question. He says, he says, he said to him, he said, Oh, oh, you're asking me a question. He knew he was being tested. And he says, Well, you're asking me how I see it. How do you see it? How do you read it? 
Because we can read something and we can always try to make it mean what we want. But look what he says. And he said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? In the Amplified, he said, Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? He's asking him a question. How do you read the law? How do you see it? In verse 27, he says, and he answered him and said, he answered and said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. And thy neighbor as thyself. That's a heavy thing. He said, how do you see it? You see a lamp that's burning. Or a person that's on fire for God. And there's not a person in here tonight that cannot get on fire for God. There's not a person in this place that cannot be a burning lamp for the Lord. But I know one thing that... The, the, the manifestation of a, of a person that's on fire for God, the first manifestation that comes from that individual is love. The love for God and the love for others. You can't escape from that. I said you cannot escape from that. If, if, if God truly lives in you, if, if the Holy Ghost is in you, and, and the fire of God is in you, you cannot escape from the love of God, from loving God and loving others. That's the, the first manifestation that will come out. From an individual who's on fire for God. You will love the spiritual things that belong to God. The Spirit of the Lord will, 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 will ignite your heart with, with a love, a deep love for God, for what belongs to God. Are you with me tonight, church? You, I mean... The Spirit of God will, will ignite you. He'll light you up. You, you can't do it on your own. The natural person, hear me, our, our, natural, me, our, our natural self, our, our, our human nature is to love the world. It's, it's to love other things. It's our, our human nature is never to love the spiritual that's why the devil works so hard to shut your lamp off. He wants to shut the fire out of your temple. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He, he wants you to burn out. He, he doesn't want you to be ignited for God. Because the first manifestation that will ever come out of any believer, amen, is love for God. A deep love for God. You, everything you are within you will love God. Are, are you with me? Everything about you will love God. Your strength, your mind, your whole being, everything about you will love God and you'll love what belongs to God. Amen. Everything that represents God, the manifestation of the Spirit is to always bring you to a deep love for God. You can't do nothing for God without love for God. Saul was running a, a, a kingdom he was running a kingdom without God. I was, I was telling the, somebody the other day, I said, the reason God needed Hannah to bring Samuel into the world, can you imagine 
God had to orchestrate a hunger into her heart. She could have gotten messed up with the rest of the rest of the Christians in her day. She could have got messed up with loving the world and the, the things of the world and, and getting so involved in, in themselves and everything that, that, that God could not have used her. But God orchestrated it in her life. God created a hunger in Hannah's heart for the presence of God. She needed God more than anything else. She hungered. Her husband comes to her and says, Hannah, and I, and I better than ten sons. And don't, don't you think I could satisfy that hunger better than the hunger that God is placing in you? And she got up from where she was at and she went into the temple and she got in her face there. Amen. To seek the Lord. Are you with me, church? Hallelujah. She had such a deep hunger. You know what? God had needed a person that would, that would love God enough. Listen to me. No one in their right mind would take their child and put their child in the temple and leave him there for life. 